Hello everyone, hello to the state of Maine. My name is Shane Lowe and I'm coming at you from a company called Mediate. You might know of us as the developers of SuperSense, Super LiDAR or ReadBit. Um, thank you guys so much for having me here. It's really weird. I've never done this before um, recorded in advance. Um, and I'm really sorry, by the way, that I, that I couldn't make it. Um, I had already months, months earlier it back in like April, um, taken this weekend off to attend a live music festival. Um, and so I'm very, very sorry that I couldn't be with you, um, in person or virtually. I really love connecting with people and being able to attend these conventions live, um, at least in as live as it can get. And so I'm, I'm really sorry to have to record. Um, but I try to be interesting. We're, we're going to, put my skills to the test here and see how good I am at talking to myself. Um, so you're, you're going to see how well versed I am at this. Um, so thank you very, very much for listening um, and for giving me your time, even though I'm not actually here with you. Um, I That being said, I want to um, make it as easy as possible for you to ask me questions um, after this presentation. So please, I'm going to give you some, I'll do this a couple of times, you know, as people come in and out, but I, let me uh, give you a moment to get out your, your note taker, your braille sense, your braille note, your tablet, laptop, slate and stylus, whatever you, whatever you want to write on. Um, and I'll give you my contact info so that during this presentation, as you think of things or afterward, you can reach out to me and I'll tell you a couple of the best ways to do that so that I can answer all of your questions as, as quickly as possible. Um, because I want to make sure that you have the opportunity to ask questions if you would like to. Um, I want you to participate. Um, you, may, you may think that I don't, you know, cause I'm, cause I'm coming at you from an MP3 file um, and it's hard to, hard to tell that I'm actually here, but I definitely want to talk to you. Um, this is anything. If you need technical support, if you need training, if you have any questions or complaints or criticisms, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm going to assume that you have your, your stuff out now. So my email address is my first name, Shane, S H A N E at mediate. M E D I A T E dot T E C H. So that's Shane at mediate dot tech. Um, and you can also send me a text. My phone number is plus one five zero two four three five two six seven one. Um, I ask that you please don't call that number. Please send a text to that number if you could. And if you'd like to have a phone conversation, you can you can text me, of course, and we can set up a good time. Or you can request a call within SuperSense or SuperLiDAR. So Shane at Mediate.Tech or request a call within one of those apps. Now, let me tell you about them. That's why I'm here, to tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do and um, what we can what we can offer to you and each other. Um, so Mediate is a relatively new startup company. We focus on artificial intelligence and computer vision. So essentially that means using technology to solve problems that aren't necessarily easy to solve. Um, these, are, these are designed to be tough problems. Um, and our co-founders, one of them is a technical specialist, computer vision specialist, AI specialist, the other one is a social entrepreneur. He focuses on serving underrepresented communities. Um, and so what better group of people, pair of people, to co-found a company like this that serves blind people? I joined the company in 2020. Uh, we started in 2017, 2018, um, working on the very first prototypes of SuperSense. Um, and I'm, I'm blind. Um, and what I do at SuperSense as a blind person is I represent us, um, the blind people of the United States, of the world, um, and talk about what we need. So I do a lot of these community events. I love talking to people. It's a lot of fun. Um, we did a concert back in July. It was live streamed everywhere. 
Um, we do all kinds of stuff. I write, we have a great blog and all that. So that's, that's part of the stuff that I do. Um, and then of course, also the, the technical support and the training and the like. Um, but the reason that all of this exists is because people like you have asked for it. So what that means is everything that I'm about to tell you about, the reason that it's been created, the reason that it's, that it exists, and that you can download it from the app store or the play store is because people have asked for it. People have requested it from us. Um, we start our research process with user interviews, talking to potential customers or people who would use our app to say, what do you need? You know, what are you doing right now that you don't necessarily have a good way to do? What do you have a problem with that you can't solve easily right now? Um, and those are the kinds of things that we target that's really important to us. Um, and so that's how SuperSense started. SuperSense is our flagship app. It's a scanning app. Um, keep that in mind. SuperSense scans stuff. So SuperSense started because we originally were trying to make a navigation app. And we were talking to people because we made these features called Object Finder and Object Explorer. Uh, those are the first two features that SuperSense ever had. And what Object Explorer does is it locates or identifies any object in your area. So you can point your phone's camera at something and it'll tell you what it is um, as you're scanning through your area. It can recognize over 600 different things, lots of stuff, um, chairs, doorways, people, cats, uh, pianos, staircases, as you could tell, anything and everything. Um, some that's really useful for traveling, some that's just useful if you want to know what's in the area or what's around you or something like that. Um, and the other feature, Object Find, lets you look for something specific. So if you're just looking for a trash can, or if you're just looking for a person, maybe to ask directions from, or if you're looking for uh, a seat you know, at a meeting, if you're looking for a chair, um, it'll, it'll specifically search for those things. And what'll happen is when it sees it, it'll vibrate um, and, and tell you what it sees. And so what's, what's really cool about these is the way that we created these two features, the first two features of SuperSense was by artificial intelligence. We created what's called a model and had to train that model with images of these different things. So you know, it, it looked through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures of chairs so that it knew what chairs were and, and thousands of pictures of people so that it could identify a person, etc. you know, to, to identify all of these many numerous objects that it can recognize. And so we, we gave this to people um, to try out our object explorer and our object finder features. And what they were saying was, oh, this is, this is really cool can it read a barcode to tell me what the product is? Can it scan a document for me? Can it read this? Can it read currency? You know, all these different questions. And, and as, a, as people in business, you know, when we're, when we're developing apps, we don't like to say no to those kinds of questions. When people are asking us, hey, this product is so cool. Can it do this? Like the worst thing we could say is, well, no, actually it doesn't. Um, and so the, 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 best way to, uh, the best way to answer that, in my experience, um, is to say not yet. You know, it's not what it does yet. And this is why, as I say, everything that we do comes from what you ask for, um, what, you, what you say you need. So at that point, people are telling us what they need. That's what drives our company. So who are we to say, no, no, we, we think that we know better what you need. So we're going to make something else. Of course not. That's ridiculous. We're going to make what people ask us to make. So that's what led us to super sense that we have today. Um, we took all of these features that people asked for document reading and importing photos to read uh, text from them, you know, using OCR technology and all this stuff. Um, we took all of those suggestions and we implemented them, but also with our own twist, you know, to really make SuperSense unique. Um, and so I, I often get the question, 
what makes SuperSense different or better than, you know, your so-called competitors, like seeing AI or Envision or something like that. Um, and this is, this is my answer to that. Um, I'm going to tell you about SuperSense, and then I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my answer to that here in a little bit. Um, I just wanted to know that if you had that question, I'm thinking of you, because I get that question a lot. Um, so we innovated on these features, on these requests that people asked for. Um, and it starts with the smart scanner. So when you open SuperSense, you have two screens. You have the Explore screen, which has the Object Explorer and the Object Finder on it that I already told you a little bit about. Um, it also has something else called the Scene Describer, which I'll tell you about here in a little bit. And the, and the second screen of SuperSense is called the Read screen. And the Read screen starts with the Smart Scanner. And what that does is it wraps up several of our features into one. Um, it wraps up our Quick Reader, our Document Reader, our Currency Reader, and the Barcode Reader into one feature. So you don't have to, if you're scanning one of those four things, a short piece of text, a page, a banknote, or a product, you don't have to tell SuperSense anything. You open it up, it's in smart scanner mode, and it's going to scan for those things automatically and figure out what you're looking at so that it can scan it appropriately, um, so that it can get the best image um, and, and process that image the way that it needs to be processed. So you don't have to pick any of those features. Um, I've used the smart scanner a lot when I'm traveling, you know, you know, down an aisle because I, I'm not necessarily sure when I'm scanning that aisle if what's going to be the easiest thing that it sees. Is it going to be a little product label with a little bit of text on it for quick read? Or will it be the barcode itself for the barcode mode? Or will it be, you know, a long list for the document reader? I don't know. So I'll use Smart Scanner in those situations where it really could be anything. And I'll let the AI f help me out and figure that out. Um, now what's nice is that you can actually pick any one of these features individually if you'd like. There's a Select Feature menu on the Read screen, and you can click on that. Um, and of course you can select from all of the Smart Scanner options. Quick Read is really good for short text, of course, like business cards. Um, I use Quick Read a lot for product labels. Um, if you don't know what a product is and the barcode reader doesn't know what it is, you can use Quick Read to figure out what the product might be so that you can then label it in the barcode reader. Um, of course, the barcode reader scans products for you. It'll, it'll identify the product name, the brand name, uh, the description, ingredients, nutrition facts, and um, we're working on cooking directions again. Um, you may have heard me say this before in other presentations um, from a long time ago that we, we were working on adding cooking directions to our barcode reader and we had to stop um, because of a lot of our, our other research. Uh, and there's there's hope for that again. So that's very exciting. We're, we've picked that project back up. I'm very happy to say that we're working on that again. Um, so that's Quick Read and Barcode Reader. The Currency Reader of course, very simple. It reads banknotes. Um, right now, we recognize the US dollar, the Canadian dollar, the Australian dollar, the Euro, and the British pound. Uh, but we're always adding more currencies. So if you have any currency requests, please, please let us know. That also applies to languages as well. If you have any uh, translation requests, let us know. So we're working on a lot of translations as well. Um, and then, so so that's Quick read, barcode, and currency. Now I want to stop on document reader for a second, um, and I want to talk about it a little more extensively um, because the document reader is one of the things that makes SuperSense like the best. Um, as a blind person, this is what I use SuperSense for the most um, because our document reader is just that damn good. Like it's it's excellent. So. We have, we have two document readers, technically. There's the single page document reader and the multi-page document reader. Of course, that they are just like they sound. If you wanted to scan a single sheet of paper or something like that, the single page is what you need. The multi-page is good for books or reports or something that's a little bit more lengthy. 
so you can scan each page in individually. Um, and what makes the document reader really amazing uh, are, are three things. Number one, um, it helps you get the best picture possible. So it's going to be incredibly accurate. Um, the way it does this is by giving you some directions, you know, in, in plain English that are easy to understand to capture the full page to get the best, clearest, most amazing document picture you've ever experienced in your life. Um, and it, and it tells you these things in, in ways you can understand, you know, it'll just say, move your phone a little further away from the document or a little closer to the document or move your phone one inch forward. Um, and we recommend that you start about a foot away from the document if you can. Um, that's usually the best height, but it might, you know, super sense will, will tell you if uh, you need to move further or closer. Um, and so as a result, it's really accurate. I mean, I usually get a maximum of two errors per page, which is, which is really nice. Um, number two of why our document reader is so wicked awesome is how fast it is. It's really quick. Um, I've seen, you know, I've seen the picture taking process and the processing of a document take minutes. And I, you know, that's, that's a really long time for me. You know, I, I have a lot of stuff to do. I really don't want to spend that much time if I can help it, you know, scanning and processing. And so I'm going to try to avoid that. And uh, SuperSense is really helpful in that regard. So you get the scan, it's very accurate, it's, and it processes it very quickly. Um, and then number three are the sharing options. So the document reader and the multi-page reader make it really easy for you to get information out of a document. Um, really, really easy. So you can copy specific paragraphs if you'd like. You don't have to save the entire document if you don't want. You can just copy certain text blocks. Um, of course, you can save the entire document if you want. You can save it as a PDF. You can put it on the cloud. You can text it. You can email it. Whatever you want to do, however you'd like to store that document. Um, now, that being said, if something goes wrong, if uh, the app crashes or your phone dies or something terrible happens, um, you, you haven't lost anything that you've scanned, actually. We store everything that you scan only on your phone. Um, we don't store it locally, you know, we don't have it anywhere. Um, but it is stored on your phone so that if something goes wrong, you can access it in another feature in the Select Features menu called the Read History feature. So you can get, you, you can go into the Read History and you can see that document and you can go back into it and, and share it or whatever. And the same thing applies for anything you scan with Quick Read, if you want to copy any of that. Or um, if you want to save information about a barcode, you know, so you don't have to scan it again. If you want those cooking directions, you can save them, which is really nice. And of course, um, if the barcode reader doesn't know what something is, you can label it with your custom label. Um, and you can see those there as well. Um, and then let's see, what else is in that? that feature menu on the read screen. So we've covered quick read, the document readers, the barcode reader, the currency reader, read history. Um, there's a magnifier in there. If you'd like to use SuperSense for your low vision needs, um, you can also change the background and the contrast and the font size um, with our document viewer when you're reading a document as well, if you'd like to do that. Um, other things in the feature menu. Um, I think the last one off the top of my head in this feature menu is the import function. Um, and that's for photos and PDFs, which is really cool. So you can, through this feature, import up to a 400 page PDF and have it read by SuperSense. And you can also OCR pictures this way uh, by importing them, which is really nice. Um, the last thing that I'll talk to you about feature wise for SuperSense is on the explore screen. So we're going to switch over off of the read screen onto the explore screen. We've already talked about the object explorer and the object finder there, but there's also a scene describer feature. This is very new. Um, 
And what's cool about Scene Describer, what's really nice, is I, I think of it as enabling blind people to take pictures. So I think this is really neat because um, up to this point, there really hasn't been a great way, at least that I know about, for us to take images. Um, and so what it does is it lets you, um, it doesn't capture the picture automatically. It lets you hit the capture button whenever you're ready. And then it'll describe the picture to you. It'll describe what it sees. Um, it'll identify objects. It'll tell you about the background, you know, the lighting. And if you like the picture, you can, you can save it. You can send it to your mom or put it on Instagram or whatever you want to do with it. Um, if you don't like the picture, you can just hit the capture button again and take another picture. Um, and I, I'm really excited about that because there are a lot of blind people who are really into taking pictures and sharing pictures and communicating information that way. Um, and so you can save pictures with SuperSense and take pictures with SuperSense, which is very, very cool. Um, I want to go now to some of the popular questions about SuperSense, um, answer a few of those as I think of them. Um, I'll, I'll kind of just just wing it here. I've been winging it the whole time. I haven't been reading off of a script or anything, but I'm just going to think of questions that people have asked me a lot before and, and answer them here before I move on to other apps. So let's see. Um, a lot of people ask me if you need the internet to use SuperSense. And the answer is no for some features and yes for other features. So for example, the barcode reader and the document reader need internet because the, your documents have to go up to our servers to be processed. Um, we don't store them there, but they do have to be processed there um, because otherwise it would take too long if it was just using your phone to process the documents. Um, and the barcodes have to be referenced against the database that we have. So those two require internet, but things like currency or quick read or object explore, you know, they don't, they don't require any internet connection. So you can use those anywhere that you like. Um, another one, of course, the what makes SuperSense better kind of thing. And I, and I want to take a second to, to break that down a little bit because a lot of people do ask, what makes SuperSense better than your competitors? You know, why are you guys the best over seeing AI and, and these guys? And um, I don't think that's, I think part of that question is, is a little invalid, you know, because we, we all are trying to make the best product that we can. Um, that's 100% true, um, including us, you know, we're trying to make the best product we can with SuperSense. And of course we want you to choose SuperSense. Um, but the thing is, it's not really a contest. It's not really a competition. Um, it's not about competing and, um, who can be the best out of each other. It's more like we all want to make the best thing for the community. Um, and so that's that's our stance as a company. We are really geared toward community representation, helping the community, standing for the community. And so that's what it's about. We're helping each other, ourselves, by helping the community. Um, so that's that's one thing that I that I always want to address. It's really important because um, that's that's how we look at these things. Um, and Going back to the question though, like actually gonna answer your question, um, a few things. Number one, we have more features that work better, in my opinion, um, as, a, as a user. This is not me trying to sell things, you know. I use SuperSense pretty regularly. Our document reader is excellent. Our, our barcode reader has more barcodes in the database, and you can label your barcodes if you'd like. Um, so if you don't know what they are, you can use quick read, figure out what they are and label them so that you don't have to, you know, to worry about them again. Um, the object explorer, the object, find, sorry, the object explorer and object find, the scene describer, these things um, I haven't really seen in any other app working the same way that they do on SuperSense. The smart scanner, which is making things really efficient so that you don't have to select what feature you want. Um, that's a really big one. And of course, the, the, the guidance in the document reader and the sharing options and the multi-page reader. I don't think uh, I don't think seeing AI has a multi-page reader. I'm not completely sure. Um, but also what's more important to me is um, the company behind the app. I, I believe 
um, that we vote on which product is the best uh, with our money, with our dollars, with our with our usage time as well, time and money. And so I always try to support the company that I feel like is, you know, is out to support me. I want to support the company that that really cares. Um, and that's really important to us. You know, that's why we have our tech support and training for free. You know, you can just call us. You can put your number in and we'll call you back. Um, we're always taking feedback and what you say decides what we develop. So to me, that's the that's the best thing about SuperSense and about the company. Um, and that's why I still work for them as a blind person and represent them because that's what we're about. We're about the people that we're working with. Um, that, so that's, that is really important. Um, let's see. What's another one off the top of my head? I did take a couple notes. Um, oh, cool. Oh, I did actually, I, I was going to say, great. I took notes and then I answered all the questions from my notes off the top of my head and then forgot all the other ones. But there is a good one that I he have here in my notes, which is that I get, can SuperSense read handwriting? Um, the answer is mostly yes. <laughs> Um, it's important to remember that uh, everyone's handwriting is different and some people's handwriting is uh, better than the handwriting of other people. And so, you know, the, the closer your handwriting resembles typed text, you know, the more uniform it is, um, the easier it will be for SuperSense to read it. Whereas if the handwriting is, you know, in this very elaborate font or is just, in, you know, is really sloppy, um, then it would be harder for, for SuperSense to read it. So. It can read really uniform, well done handwriting. If it's if it's really good handwriting, it might struggle. Um, if it's really bad handwriting, it might struggle. But it does read it better than uh, most things that I've experienced in the past. So that's a that's a plus on handwriting. Um, and then finally, the the last question I'll talk about for SuperSense is how much it costs. Um, we do have to charge for SuperSense, unfortunately. That's for a couple of reasons. One is that I love being able to buy my own dinner. It's really nice to be able to afford food. Um, so thanks for keeping me going um, and the rest of us as well. But also um, it helps us pay for, you know, the, the things that the features that we have in SuperSense cost us money. Um, and so we have to try to make our money back, you know, paying for the servers that process the documents and the database of the barcodes and things like that. Um, and finally, it helps us with our research projects, like uh, one I'm going to talk to you about here in just a moment. So if you want to pay for SuperSense, um, by the way, thank you very much to anyone who has paid for SuperSense. I really appreciate it. All of us really appreciate it. Um, and if you'd like to join them, because you're smart, you can, <laughs> you can subscribe if you'd like. Um, our subscription prices are $5 per month or $50 annually. Or if you don't like subscriptions, if you're like me and you want to buy the whole thing in, in one payment, you can do $100 and that's lifetime access. And that includes all the new features for SuperSense, all the bug reports, um, all the bug fixes. I mean, all that kind of stuff. So you get all the new features, all the bug fixes um, in those you know, in those payment plans. So if you are so inclined, seriously, thank you very, very much. Um, and when you pay for SuperSense, you help us develop other products, other, you know, research projects. One of those, the biggest research project that we've been talking about lately is Super LiDAR. Um, so SuperSense is the scanning app. Super LiDAR is the navigation app. We're kind of going back to our roots a little bit. I remember, uh, Remember, I, I was telling you that we wanted to start off by making a navigation app, and this is us revisiting that kind of dream of ours with Super LiDAR. So if you don't know, LiDAR technology uses light to analyze a space. That's kind of the best way that I can describe it. And it's actually really old technology. It was invented in the 1960s, um, and it was you know recently integrated into Apple devices. You've got it on the iPhone 12 Pro and up. So that's exciting. Um, so everybody who's upgrading to 13s, it's going to be cool to uh, to check out Super LiDAR. And um, Super LiDAR uses that information, uses that 
analysis of a space to help blind people avoid obstacles. So right now, it's a prototype. It's pretty new. Um, it's not even a year old yet. And we've been doing a lot of research behind the scenes. We haven't been putting out a lot of updates yet for Super LiDAR because a lot of this is research and testing because navigation apps take a lot of both um, because people are, are relying on them and using them for a lot more. So please remember, if you're using Super LiDAR, um, it's, it should never be your primary source of information. You know, always trust your cane, your guide dog, your own senses first and foremost, and then Super LiDAR helps you get extra information afterward, second line of defense. So what it, what it does right now is help blind people avoid obstacles. So um, I'll kind of give you a, an example, a little scenario. So if you're, if you're walking forward down a sidewalk and it's totally open, Super LiDAR is not going to do anything. You know, you're, you're holding, I, I always hold it with the LiDAR sensor and the back cameras facing away from me, kind of at chest level, and it's scanning always. And it has an amazing scanning angle, by the way. Super LiDAR scanning angle is incredible. Um, it can it can see up where your head is. It can see down where your cane or guide dog would be. It can see off to the sides. It's really good. It has a really, excuse me, a really wide field of view. Um, and so as you're going down the sidewalk and, and it detects something, because it can see about 15 feet out. So once it detects something, it's going to play a pitch. Um, and by default, that pitch starts out high, and then it descends um, as you get closer to something. So as you, no, I'm sorry, I think I'm wrong. We've added the settings so that you can change this if you want. And so now I forget what the, what the default is. It doesn't matter. So it starts playing a pitch when it sees something, and it will change as you get closer. It'll either get higher or lower, depending on what your setting is. Um, as you get closer to the object, uh, to, to, just to report how far away it is. Uh, simultaneously, if Super LiDAR knows what the object is, because it can recognize people, it'll tell you if they have a mask on or not. It can recognize doorways, um, seats, you know, different things like this. It will tell you what the object is and how far away it is with, you know, with the voice. So, you know, it could say a person wearing a mask in 10 feet. And as you get a little closer, it'll give you updates and things like that. And then finally, it'll give you haptic feedback as well. It'll vibrate a little more fiercely as you get closer to something. Um, and you can adjust all of these feedback in your settings, you know, to, to tell it which feedback you want, which ones you don't want, um, etc. And I, I love that about Super LiDAR, um, that it's, it, it's really fast and it's always working um, you know, to, to tell you about obstacles and objects. So um, it's definitely worth trying. Please give it a shot. Let us know what you think about it. Um, I'm doing a lot of testing on a new version right now. That's very, very exciting. Uh, there's some really cool things that you can do with the, the latest version. It's not released yet. Um, it's a project that we're working on, though. So there's hope for it. Uh, I, I think that you'll see it soon. Um, and Super LiDAR is free, by the way. So this is great news. Super LiDAR is free. And then the, the last thing I'm going to talk to you about today, uh, our third app, is called ReadBit. Um, and ReadBit was actually developed for a mainstream sighted audience. Um, Super Sense and Super LiDAR were really made for blind people. You know, the blind community was the focus. ReadBit is us branching out a little bit. Um, and, and reaching out to, to sighted people. And, and the, the main premise of ReadBit, which is kind of cool, is text-to-speech access. So as blind people, we're really used to text-to-speech. You know, we use it all the time, you know, with, with voiceover, with NVDA or JAWS, you know, with um, any, any of these screen readers that we're using with Orca. You know, we have text-to-speech at our fingertips all the time because we need it. But the same thing isn't always as obvious to sighted people, you know, to the mainstream. And so ReadBit does have some uses for blind people, uh, but the main thing that it does is converts text 
into speech. Um, so you can get a scan of an image, kind of like you do with SuperSense. You can give it a web link. Um, you can import a picture uh, or like a screenshot or something. And Readbit will read it out loud. Um, it has really nice voices. So that's one thing that blind people can really benefit from is the, the great natural voices that we have for Readbit. The other thing that's really cool about Readbit that's very, very exciting um, is the summarization feature. Readbit, the, I'm still impressed, by the way, that it can do this. This still blows my mind. Um, Readbit uses AI to summarize text. So if you give it a PDF that's uh, 300 pages long, you know, if you give it the, the Mueller report, it will condense that using AI into something a lot more readable. And of course, the length depends on, on the length of what you, what you give to it, but it condenses what you hear so that you can scan documents and text really quickly, um, which is amazing. Um, it's, it's a really cool idea. Readbit is a paid app. Um, it's the, the prices just like SuperSense. Um, in, in the United States, you know, they're, they're typically always the same, but if for whatever reason, um, you're in a different region or, you know, you're elsewhere, check the app for the prices. Um, because we're always, you know, we're doing sales sometimes, um, and you know, the price is different in different currencies. So always check Readbit or SuperSense, the subscription page, um, you know, for the most up-to-date prices. But this has been seriously a, a, a real pleasure. I want to thank you guys for listening to me on a recording for, what is this, 37 minutes that I've been talking to you. Uh, I, I think I've done reasonably well at, at talking to myself. Um, I'll give you another second to get out your stuff to take notes with, you know, the, the Braille senses, the Braille notes out there, the iPhones, Slate and Stylus, whatever you got. Um, Give you a second. I'll give you my contact info one more time because I would love to hear from you and, and see what you think um, about any of these apps. If there's any feature requests that you have, if there's any complaints you have, critiques, um, any comments, um, anything like that, even if it's just a great experience and you want to tell us about it, let us know. We'd really love to hear from you. Um, so that information again, my email address is Shane, S H A N E at mediate.tech. Um, and you can also text me. My number is 502-435-2671. And we can set up a call that way if you'd like, or we can just text. Um, but if you do want to talk, you can also request a call within SuperSense or SuperLiDAR, um, and it will send me your number, and I'll call you as soon as I'm available for that. Um, you can go to our website for our newsletter. It's supersense.app. Our newsletter is there if you want to subscribe to it. Our blog is there. We have all kinds of interesting stuff on the blog um, about SuperSense, Super LiDAR, and ReadBit, but also information about the concert that we put on. That was a lot of fun with uh, Mr. Andy Timmons as a headliner and also a lot of blind performers. We do a lot with the blind performing arts in our newsletter and on our website. So if you're a performing artist and want to get in touch with us for a feature, let us know. Uh, but it's also to promote those people because um, the arts are, are really important to me. I'm a musician on the side. Um, anyway, on social media, we are SuperSense AI. That's Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. If you want to follow us there, we post product updates and artist features and all kinds of stuff um, there as well. What you should remember, SuperSense is the scanning app. SuperLiDAR is the navigation app. And ReadBit is the summarization text-to-speech app. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to the state of Maine today. Thank you very much to Roger, who went through uh, quite a lot to get us here. Thank you very, very much, my friends. Um, and thank you to everyone who's listened for the past 40 minutes. I appreciate you very much. Um, and I look forward to hearing from you about anything at all. Thank you very much for your time. And to the state of Maine, I'll see you next time in person or at least virtually, but not on a recording. I will see you next time. 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 Time.